Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Pit Stop, the show that refuels your entrepreneurial drive. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Pit Stop, the show that helps refuel your entrepreneurial engine. In today's show, we have key conversations that help grow your business. I'd like to welcome all our listeners to check out our channel on SoundCloud and follow us on Twitter at Bernadette Boulay. You're tuned into the Entrepreneur's Pit Stop, brought to you by Bernadette Boulay. Today we speak to Lebu, who is a social entrepreneur, but a marketer at heart. He's a maver- his maverick approach to solving problems in Africa has earned him a seat at the entrepreneurial dinner table. As the founder of The Hookup Dinner, a fast-rising, ambitious startup movement for entrepreneurs in Africa, he has the privilege of connecting and engaging with the best minds focused on building a culture of entrepreneurship in Africa. He's also the co-founder of the People's Fund, an asset-based crowdfunding platform that seeks that seeks to unlock capital growth constraints for startups in emerging markets. In this segment, I speak to to Lebu and I find out the importance of planning ahead. He gives us an understanding of how the People's Funding came about and any upcoming third events. Now, I went to to one of your vision boarding um, parties um, level and I found it quite informative. Mm -hmm. Thanks for making the time. Um, Talk to me about what is a vision board party and the importance of planning. Well, vision boarding is nothing new. It's it's in the Bible. Uh, In the Bible, uh, in Habakkuk, um, the prophet talks about writing a vision down and it's for an appointed time as well, you know. So for me, I I try and take... um, Things that have already existed mm-hmm. and repackage them for the millennial generation. Um, sure. We 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 consume content di- differently, mm-hmm. and I, and we are into experiences, and that has been the critical thing about tapping into um, wisdom and, and ancient knowledge and using it for for current times in order to prepare for the future. You know, okay. um, so vision boarding for me is about uh, putting your dreams down on paper mm-hmm. and being very intentional about them and not just dreaming about anything and everything, you know, and mm. being rather focused and very intentional about what it is that you actually want to do, achieve, and how are you going to go about achieving that and wha- what's going to be your execution plan. Uh, sure. And I think the most important part for me in doing these um, uh, type of workshops is to help people with tools that mm. can kind of guide you and ensure that you can actually execute, which is where we fail most mm. it's in the execution. I agree with you. I find that planning is so exciting. It's like it's like the desserts mm. of into a meal and you like plan and you have all these exciting, you know, you get excited, you get yourself worked up. But in terms of execution, that's when the hard work actually starts, mm. right? Mm. Mm. Okay. And how long have you been doing vision boarding parties? Well, I started doing my own vision board in 2015 okay. and saw some results, went back into it in 2016. I was just returning from Mozambique, actually, Yeah. Uh, in December. And when I did it, and the crazy thing about when you plan is that you, you're constantly planning for the sunlight, but you don't realize that um, with that, there's also rain that's going to come in, and uh, it, it comes with the mud. Mm. And, and therefore, it's about the ability to take on the responsibility and, and, mm. and the sacrifices that come with it, and being able to accept them and, and, and acknowledge them that they're part of the journey. Mm. Um, Shortly after I'd done that, I went through a divorce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, cra- crazy, crazy things, that, you know. And and I'm a family man. Sure. Um, I'm a pastor's kid, you know. Yeah. Like, it's all the things that... <laughs> Don't happen to PK. <laughs> it's not supposed to happen in my life. You no, know, you yeah. Know? But in hindsight, when I look at my vision board um, that I did in 2016, I looked at it in 20, late 2017. Sure. I was like, whoa, things are happening. Hmm. Uh, and And... At the p- at that time, it was not intentional. I mm. just put it out because it's things I really wanted, mm. and then I started eliminating things. So, when I organized one in 2018 with Accenture in in January of 2018, sure. got a group of people together, and we became very intentional, for, uh, like very specific, very focused, yeah. and started building around that. And the feedback I got throughout the year last year was amazing. Right now, and also even with my own feedback, when I look at my vision, but I realized that. You can achieve a lot of things. Um, you don't have to worry too much about the process, what's going to happen in between. 
but you have to be very clear on your goal, the end goal, what is it and why mm. why that goal? And then you work backwards. The, sure. wor- the working backwards is the execution plan. Mm. And I, I think it's something that everybody should do. I've been involved in the space of entrepreneurship development for the longest time. Yeah. And I realized that one of the mistakes that we make as um, people that build up entrepreneurs is that we focus so much on their businesses that we, fo- we neglect the actual person behind the business mm. who's the driver of this thing, you know. And um, I mentor quite a few of these guys that I've brought up al- along the, 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 the food chain. And I realized that some of them, when they start experiencing mental health issues, mm. uh, breakdowns, mm-hmm. and all of so- things that happen, it's because we haven't looked at the other side, you know. Mm. And th- that's, 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 that's the essence of why I do vision boarding. It's about the person, sure. personal development process first mm. before tapping into business. No, well done on that. I mean, funny enough, um, I went to your vision board yeah. three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. The pit stop, the entrepreneur's pit stop was one of my my goals and one of my nice. um, vision board um, yeah. stuff. So I'm really excited about it. And I think it's one of those, um, it takes a different approach to just writing mm. New Year's resolutions. You're mm. so intentional, like you say. Mm. You go in the year and... Y- your goals are clear yeah. it's crystal clear you know what you want and you go through it and it's, it goes back to what you're saying you know it constantly reminds you I mean that scripture that you talked about in mm-hmm. Habakkuk is write a vision down make it plain on a tablet that mm-hmm. he may run who reads it so yep. every time you wake up in the morning you see your vision you're like okay mm-hmm. it's start up and go right mm-hmm. that's, that's awesome um, what I also found is that we often wait for the end of the year to take stock of our goals and achievements. Mm. I'm quickly starting to see the importance of quarterly reviews. Mm. Will you be having any more vision board parties anytime soon? And will they be in the form of a review or will it take a different approach? Well, look, I, I target three, three sets of people. First is the overachievers, people that already know what they're doing. Um, sure. So reviews around such people it's just an accountability thing where we check in on yeah. each other to check um, how far in are you with your goals and what's happening mm. and it's just to have somebody that holds you accountable the other type of person is somebody that's starting out they're still confused they don't know what they're doing mm. so we try and go a bit deeper with those type of people mm. um I, w- I would host whether i'm doing it virtually um through a webinar mm. or through a full day boot camp like the one that you attended yeah and the outcome is meant to be a retreat uh, where we go away um, mm-hmm. for a couple of days. And the critical thing, and the, actually the reason I love going to Mozambique for these things is that it's a very calming environment. Mm. It's in the Indian Ocean, very sure. warm. And Mozambique's got some, it's got some of the finest beaches in yes. the world, um, all the way up to Pemba, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I realized that it, it covers two things for me. On mm. the one side, people get to experience culture a bit differently. Yeah. They, but more importantly, what is happening with millennials is that we are very purposeful in our mm. experiences. We don't want you to just have experiences for the sake of it. You don't want to party just for the sake of party. Sure. You want something out of it, and it, it, it speaks to the current generation. So mm. when we do these vision boarding sessions, that the intention is to help you dream, mm. help you unleash the thing that is within you, but mm. give you the tools that come with that. Because yeah. quite often we get told what to do, but nobody holds us accountable or gives mm. us the tools to be able to achieve this. And that, that is my intention with it. So th- there will definitely be quarterly reviews that come up. In fact, you came up with, with this great idea about <laughs> doing quarterly. And I, and I love them, you know. Sure. Um, I do the, the, the retreats quarterly as well. Okay. So we go our way to Mozambique or other destinations, at least uh, uh, per quarter. And it's with different groups. So I'm, sure. I'm trying to reach out to as many people as possible mm. that have never experienced this kind of thing. Um, for them to be to get the clarity that yeah. we some of us already have, you know, so mm. that we can all um, enjoy in the in the success that will come. Now, I really like what you talked about, and well done on that. Well done, honestly. Mm. I really like what you talked about accountability, mm. and especially for people who don't have mentors. There's no one who's checking you on what you're doing as an entrepreneur. Mm. Um, are, are you achieving your targets? Mm. Are you actually setting out to spend more time with your family? Mm. Are you working on your health? Is it's a balanced approach, you yep. know. You look at every facet of your life, mm-hmm. not just the fact that you're trying to push the numbers, numbers, and push those millions. Mm. We're talking about you as a person, and it's it's it looks at as a person as a brand. Mm. Before we go on, I'm really enjoying this conversation. Can we go on a motivational break? The workouts you do or don't do that will show up in the future. The foods you eat today will affect your future on a visual and energy level. The same is true with your thoughts and information. What you feed your mind will shape your future. 
If all you do is take in garbage, guess what your future is going to be made up of? Commit to feed your mind with successful thoughts and surround yourself with those who have the same ambition. It doesn't matter where you get your information from. You may read. You may get it from podcasts or videos. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you keep feeding your mind every day. You're tuned into the Entrepreneur's Pit Stop, brought to you by Bernadette Boule. Welcome back, welcome back. We're getting some positive feedback on our social media platforms. If you want to know who's talking, this is Bernadette. So you can find me on Twitter at Bernadette Boule. Salabuja, please give us your Twitter handle. Uh, Dr. Lives Good. Awesome uh, stuff. Good with a GUD. Yes, Dr. Lives Good. Um, welcome back. So one of the goals you mentioned um, in, in our vision boarding was how you and a close friend set out to achieve um, the People's Fund mm. and, and also just achieve those numbers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you put that on your vision board. Um, now, in view of the study by the Seed Academy, the People's Fund is the first crowdfunding for black entrepreneurs. Mm. It noted that the majority of the entrepreneurs who wanted funding had been turned away from banking institutions for poor credit rec- pr- poor credit scores. Now, just to learn that the capital they required was 30000 to 50000 Now, for me as an entrepreneur, I was quite disappointed because it basically said you, 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 you just needed that small push to, 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 to make it big, right? Or to, to have your, your big breakthrough. But um, financial institutions are not doing that. Now, what is the role of the People's Fund and is it catering to this market? Yeah, so we, we try and solve our own problems in everything that we do. Yeah. Um, I started the Hookup Dinner because I was shy and I didn't have a network. <laughs> and we started the crowdfunding platform purely because we were realizing that we're struggling to access finance. So we're like, let's go to the crowd. Um, the best thing that we know how to do is to, um, it's not all doom and gloom. It's not all doom and gloom. But you've just opened up another exciting conversation though. <laughs> and I want to talk about that before I let you go. Yeah. I think a lot of stereotypes is that for you to be an entrepreneur, you need to quit your job entirely and you just need to make that sacrifice and go in head first. And one of the things people don't consider, you have medical aid, guys. Exactly. When, you, when you're an entrepreneur, there's no medical mm. aid. Mm. You're paying rent or you, 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 there's some way you have a roof above your mm. head when you're on a full-time job. Mm. People don't consider the part-time entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship doesn't have to be something where you quit your job. Mm. Mm. you know, and say, okay, I'm out, I'm doing mm. this, right? Mm. What are your perceptions on that or the misconceptions of entrepreneurship? Do you see why I, I have gone into vision boarding so much? Mm. It is because once, once you've helped a person create clarity in their minds about uh, how they can be enterprising, mm. it does not mean quitting your job yeah. at all. Mm. We've made the mistake of preaching entrepreneurship and saying it's sexy. Yes. It's not. It's yes. one of the hardest things you'll do. Why? Mm. Because there's no, there's no fence. Mm. There's, there's nothing that holds you up when you're down and mm. your family turns against you. Mm. Um, your friends say you're crazy. Mm. Everybody thinks you, 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 you're a lunatic. Mm-hmm. And that, those are the realities. Mm. And because I- you're in such an environment, don't do it stupidly. Yeah. It's just not worth it. It's not mm. worth losing everything for a dream that you are not sure about. Mm. Rather, stay on with your job mm. and start your side hustle. Do as much research as possible. Mm. Understand something. Business is a science. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is an art. Mm. And you've got to mix the two. Mm. The science part means you study the, the, the market that you are in. You've done your research. Yeah. You are testing with your customers. Yeah. And you only quit your job when your customers are buying more and you're actually making more money than your job. And therefore, mm. you're making a calculated decision. Yes. As a matter of fact, real entrepreneurs are risk averse. Mm. The, there's this notion that yeah. entrepreneurs take the risk. They, they, mm. they jump without a parachute. It's mm. one of the biggest lies ever told. Mm. Don't believe it. Mm. Entrepreneurs take calculated risks. Yeah. Yeah. What I found interesting in, in, in line of what you're saying is the Seed Academy research on the real state of entrepreneurship mm. is that about, um, I think they said over, let me not say the numbers correct, um, incorrectly, but there was a bigger number of part-time entrepreneurs who were making more money than the full-time entrepreneurs who are, don't even have a client base. Yep. So they're in full-time business. They don't have any cash flow. They don't have any client base. And mm. it really is a misconception, guys. Mm. If you want to go into business, do your research, like you say. Mm understand your market um, because sometimes what you do is you'll leave your job run your business mm. if you are making you're making exactly what you made if you were working mm. would it not be better to have multiple streams of income as mm. opposed to just one mm. yeah well it's been a great conversation i've really enjoyed having you on the show 
Um, I think you said your parting words. Anything else that you want to impart? You know, just that <laughs> little bit of gold, Yana, that you've got in your head. I, I think uh, believing in our dreams is, is very important and uh, having very clear goals. It's very critical. Mm. Um, but take a step back. Uh, question as to why you do it mm. and also solve problems. Don't don't be a lifestyle entrepreneur for if, if you don't have a base, if you're not being followed by anybody. And if, for instance, at a party, you're not the person that makes it pop, you don't have to start a lifestyle business because nobody's going to buy from you, you know. Um, when, once you understand that, if you understand what the, the science around networks um, mm. is, then, then then it becomes easier because you're solving actual problems and then you can infuse passion into that, mm. not the other way around. Don't, don't believe the fall in love with your job or fall in love with the business. Like, th- that comes later. Mm. First of all, you've got to solve problems. Why? Because your customers' problems are not necessarily the things that you love, but they're the things that get you paid. Yep. And they pay for the dream that you yeah. have. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready to achieve the breakthrough they said wasn't coming? I want you to be certain about this. Are you ready? To kick the door down if after knocking no one signals you to come in. I said I want you to be certain about this. Are you ready? I'm ready. Because it's not going to be handed to you. You're going to have to take it. You're going to come across people who have the power to but won't put food on your plate and binge. You're going to meet people who know you're amazing but you're a threat to their interests. So rather than pull you up, they're going to tell you that you don't have what it takes, kid. It's going to shock you to find out just whose smiles were actually fake, B. So from now on, you build an attitude that has you rising up again and again. When they kick you, don't you stay down there. The crying, the complaining, the quitting, don't you bring that anywhere around here. Hey, we've learned to take hours on the chin. Welcome to Successful Living. We welcome only the brave around here. Podcasting. The practice of using the internet to make digital recordings of broadcasts available for downloading to a computer or mobile device. Or, as they say in South Africa, a fantastic way to tell a good story or to bring your brand to life. To find out more on how podcasting can change your brand, speak to us at brandlive.co.za. Brandlive.co.za. We bring your brand to life. You're listening to a brandlive.co.za podcast. You're tuned into the Entrepreneur's Pit Stop, brought to you by Bernadette Boule. The 2018 financial year end has recently come to an end, with organizations across the board rushing to ensure that their books are up to par. Probably one of the busiest times for auditors and and the lovely people in the accounts department. As of the 1st of March... The new financial year has kicked off with an opportune time to implement new strategies. I speak to strategy guru Janet Ferguson. Stay tuned. In today's segment, I speak to Janet Featherstone. Janet is the founder and director of Integrate Business, which delivers executive coaching, consulting and training to both local and international clients, including mining groups, banks, state-owned enterprises and various country delegates. She holds an MBA and is a certified professional coach and is a lecturer of productivity and team performance at the Gordon Institute of Business. Hi, Janet. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, it's a great honor to be spending the next 30 minutes with you. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Now, as a business owner, I resonated with your article because I realized often we're so, so busy um, and putting a strategy is sometimes put aside because we're just trying to stay afloat. Now, in a growing business, staying afloat is key to my survival. Responding to customers' demand is really what pays the bills. What suggestions do you have to the business owner who is crippled by lack of resources, including time to strategize? What advice do you have to, to someone like myself who's saying, I don't have the time, I just want to get this done and get it out of the way? 
Well, you know, I, th- I think there's a couple of phases that we as business owners go through. Sure. So I think when you're in startup, generally it is a bit chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> you're finding your feet, you, you're trying to win business. So I think that that kind of pace is, is really a bit manic. Sure. But I think once your business starts settling down mm-hmm. and you start really getting into the groove of things, sure. then it's time to have a look at mm-hmm. how strategy starts playing out. Sure. And I think then in terms of focus, mm-hmm. it's really important that you identify really key big bang for buck activities mm-hmm. that are going to drive whatever it is that you're looking for in your business. Sure. So whether that's revenue growth or whether that's accelerating customer demand sure. or whatever it is. Sure. But but you've got to prioritize that mm-hmm. because otherwise you have a hamster on the wheel mm-hmm. running working mm-hmm. hours and yeah. hours and weekends as mm-hmm. you would know as an yes. entrepreneur. Yeah. But you're not really making good solid progress. Yeah. And that's in a small business more than anything what you need. I actually appreciate what you're saying because I think at the end of the day, you're still going to need to revert back to what you've done. And if you haven't done anything, you don't know how to go back and say, how do I fix it, right? Well, I think that's the absolute key thing of strategy. Mm -hmm. People imagine that a strategy is this thing that sits up in a cloud, (laughs) you know, that... uh, you know, that kind of tree huggers think about. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it really isn't that. Sure. It's it's a really firm commitment to say within a period of time, whether it's one year, three years, five years, whatever horizon you're looking, mm-hmm. could even be next week. Mm-hmm. This is where I want to be. Yeah. This is how I'm going to know when it is that I've got there. Sure. And these are the measures that I'm going to apply to know how successful I've been. Yeah. So it's a very practical thing. Yeah. It's not it's not an airy fairy yeah. Yeah. Um, endeavor. It's it's an execution plan. Yeah. That obviously once you identify your direction and, and where you compete, mm-hmm. then you know you you've got to put some deliverables behind that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you will spin your wheels. I agree. Now, last year was an interesting year for South African politics. Um, it was quite volatile. It was uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. A VUGA environment, if you mm-hmm. would call it. Um, wouldn't a strategy just go out the window? I mean. In retrospect, and I ask this question because when we moved away from the presidency of Zuma administration to Cyril, there was an upswing. And I think certain you know, strategies that were put in place to counter that needed, would obviously fall that way. How does one pan around a Vuga environment? Okay. I think in, in the South African context, it's quite important to differentiate from strategy and brand. Sure. You know, I think... I think Cyril Ramaphosa comes with a very strong personal brand, sure. you know, and I think we were swept up, all of us, sure. in the excitement of having a new leader mm-hmm. and one that comes, I think, with as much credibility as he does. Sure. But at the same time, there's still some real challenges mm-hmm. that we're sitting with as a com- as a country. Sure. And that has to come down to a good strategy. Sure. You know, so even when you're in a VUCA environment, if you don't have a strategy, you're going to run around like a headless chicken. Mm-hmm. You've still got to have an idea of where you're headed mm-hmm. and where you're going to compete and what makes you different from your competitors. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're just an also round. Mm-hmm. And the challenge with that then becomes that because there's no differentiation you end up competing on price Mm. and then you become commoditized and then your margins are just under pressure Mm -hmm. so that that isn't a sound business business model to look to look at yeah okay but now one of the things i thought about is um how details does this how detailed does the strategy need to be i mean do you look at a short-term plan for the next 12 months or the next two years, or the next five years? How detailed um, does a strategy need to be? So, so I would say, I think that depends on the size of the organization. Yeah. You know, when you've got big multinationals, oh, yeah. those are the juggernauts that just take years and years to kind of shift direction. Yeah, sure. Sometimes it's slow and incremental. Sure. When it's just you and I working sure. on our own, sure. we can implement a strategy in a month. Sure. sure. You know, so I really just think it depends what, what it is you want to do and how significant that change is. Mm-hmm. If you're completely changing direction and you're a big company, mm-hmm. yeah. then you would probably need to look at a longer term horizon. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think nowadays most organizations really are looking at a 12 month view. Mm-hmm. It's not to say you're changing direction every 12 months, mm-hmm. um, but you're certainly putting plans in place that you want to achieve within 12 months. Okay. Um, and, and I think you've probably got a longer-term vision, mm-hmm. but the actual implementation of that strategy 
is, is I think, best served on, a, on an annual basis. Okay. I don't think you want to be changing strategy often mm -hmm. because that then means that you're, yeah, you just lose that sense of traction, momentum, yeah. and focus mm -hmm. because you're constantly chasing the next bright, shiny object. True. Which I think entrepreneurs in particular are quite good mm -hmm. at doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it doesn't help us get the results we're looking for because we don't we don't dig in long enough to mm -hmm. actually you know get the traction that yes. we need in the direction that we're going. Okay, you spoke about implementation. Is there a difference between strategy implement and, and implementation plan and goals? So, I, you know, I think, I think they can all be the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, it is literally just a case of figuring out where you want to go, mm -hmm. which is your strategy, mm -hmm. and how you want to get there. Okay. You know, I think your goals, you could say, I, I would almost say they're objectives because they must, they must be written into the DNA of the organization. Mm -hmm. So if your strategy, for example, is to launch a new product within the next three years, for example, mm -hmm. by the end of year one, mm -hmm. for sure, you want to have develop the product and had some kind of prototyping done sure. so that you understand where you are. Mm -hmm. So that I think is the difference between a short term goal versus a strategic objective. Sure. Yeah. If that if that answers that. I think it does. <laughs> cool. There's an interesting school of thought that looks at vision and mission. And then there's there's other organizations who look at the purpose of the delivery. What are your thoughts on on that? Are they the same thing or does the purpose um, help strengthen the vision and mission? So vision, of course, is the long term, it almost becomes an inspirational objective that an organization is trying to seek. Mm -hmm. The mission is how that vision gets achieved. So it's almost like the progression towards. Mm -hmm. But for me, that purpose is so important because it's the why. Yeah. You know, I, I was actually looking at these the other day and, and Disney, for example, mm -hmm in terms of their theme parks, yeah. their vision is the happiest place on earth. Okay. I just love that. I thought, <laughs> wow, because that just that yes. just encapsulates everything that yes. a person would feel when they get yes. to that theme park. Yes. You know, and then it's a case of how do you deliver that? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and why would you do that? Well it's happiness, isn't it? Yes. I mean that's the that's the purpose. That's mm -hmm. our big why. Yeah. And if I think if we don't have our big why, mm -hmm. when things get tough, yeah. Sometimes I think we can throw in the towel. Sure. Really important. So, so I'm in Integrate Consulting, which is a consulting business that I, I have two other partners sure. that I work with there. I mean, our vision there really is to make business do better business. I get you. Wow. You know, and, and I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's it. It's simple. But, yeah. but our, our kind of purpose is to just enable business, small business. Yeah. yeah. That's and you look at all the benefits that that comes with. It's sure. employment, sure. it's economic drivers, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And that's the reason we get up in the morning. I like that. I mean, the reason you get up in the morning is the why, is the purpose, and it gets exactly. to that. Okay, I like that. Um, I was pleasantly surprised in your article. Um, and the article, actually, let me actually put people in tune as to what the article is. Yeah, so I mean, I wrote a couple of articles for Entrepreneur Magazine, mm -hmm. um, two of which obviously focused on strategy. Yes, the one that I quite enjoyed was how a clear strategy can change the game. And in the article, I was pleasantly surprised in learning that in putting one strategy together, conversations with one's client is important. Mm -hmm. I think as business owners or any business, we're so internal focused, we never get to think, do I need to engage with my um, client? Um, why is it important in your view? So, so let me just take one step back because I think, I think as a business owner, the absolute first thing you need to figure out is what is the end game for you and your business? Sure. So are you building this thing to sell? Sure. Because if you're doing that, then for example, profitability becomes really important. Okay. So you would need to then consciously control costs, including sure. what you pay yourself, sure. to make sure that that profit number is as big as possible because that's what investors and, and people looking for acquisitions are looking for. Sure. But, you know, if you're driving this business to be a family heirloom, mm. something that you can pass down to your children, yeah. then that bottom line number actually doesn't matter. Building right? Up. I mean, as long as you've got the cash flow to continue business operations, you can then take as much money as you know as the business can fund sure. out and pay yourself so i think you've got to that, that is the absolute fundamental first decision you make as a business owner sure. because that absolutely determines how you run your business 
But then when it comes to outward looking strategy, mm -hmm. I think you absolutely, the, the person who understands your business sometimes better than you do, and definitely knows your competitors better than you do, sure. because they probably would have experienced them as yeah. your customers. Sure. So if you want to understand how difficult you make it for your customers to do business mm -hmm. with you, mm -hmm. the people to ask are your customers. Mm -hmm. And if you want to find out how competitive your pricing is, mm -hmm. ask your customers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they are the ones investing mm -hmm. in you and yeah. your products. Yeah. And, and hopefully you'll find an, a, a customer is prepared to give you an honest view. Sure. And that, that information is unbelievably valuable. I like what you mentioned about um, the service delivery as well as the pricing, because those are intentional questions. It's not just saying, are you happy with what we do? And they could easily just say yes, but there's no contract in place. There's no agreement for the long term. And the assumption is, well, if they're doing business with me, surely they're happy with my service, right? Well, I mean, maybe they just haven't had time to look. <laughs> you know, and, and I think assuming that customers are happy is, mm -hmm. is probably um, a poor assumption to be making. Sure. Um, you know, they, they said, great, it's, it's not terribly polite, but it says mm -hmm. assumptions make an ass out of you and me, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's always valuable just to, to check what we are assuming. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, you know, sitting in front of your customers, but asking pointed questions. So if your customer says, I'm happy with my service. Well, on a scale of one to 10, so one being it couldn't be worse, 10 being it couldn't be better, yeah. where do you rate it? Because then the customer can't go, I'm happy with your service. Yeah. It's either a four or it's a yeah. 10 or an yeah. eight. You know, so at least yeah. you can kind of quantify that number. Okay. Now we spoke about the VUGA um, environment that we yeah. operate in. Yeah. What tools can one use to mitigate this fast pace our generation is working in? So I think one thing we've got to celebrate about millennials is their absolute comfort with technology. Sure. And I think us, and I put myself in there, not you, the older generation <laughs> really needs to start appreciating what we can automate mm -hmm. um, to the point that I think we need to put the hat on to say, how can I automate, automate myself out of a job? Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, which sectors are going to become um, automated and you know you, you mentioned earlier the, the financial urines yeah. accountants may be you know mm -hmm. top of the chopping board sure um so i think it's really important to start looking at the tools how we are enabled by that mm -hmm. start looking at things like artificial intelligence mm -hmm. business information systems mm -hmm. really start getting an appreciation of how significant data is mm -hmm. in terms of what we do and how we do it mm -hmm. um, and leverage that as much as we can. Mm -hmm. We need to, I think, appreciate that, you know, there is a new way that business is being done now sure. and the foundation of that is technology. Sure. And if we're not tech tech capable, yeah. we're going to become irrelevant, I think, faster, faster than we imagine. I like what you talk about. You talk about the fourth industrial revolution and it's a huge buzzword in today. Um, but as someone who's doing business in other African countries, I still I, I tend to battle with the concept that perhaps in the South African context, yes, it is something that is a buzzword. It's one thing that as a business I need to prepare. But in other African countries, I think that um, technology is there, but I don't think it's as fast as we'd like it to move. In terms of strategy, do you think that obviously certain strategies need to apply to the different um, markets that one, one um, works in? So definitely. Sure. But I just want to say, though, for me, the way the technology must be leveraged sure. is to enhance human interaction. Sure. So if I'm sitting in front of a customer, hopefully I've used Google mm -hmm. before I meet with that customer to understand who they are, what their LinkedIn profile looks like, mm -hmm. you know, what their areas of interest are, what their business does. Mm -hmm. You know, so without that, that interaction would have been diminished mm -hmm. because the information at my fingertips would have been less mm -hmm. and if we just apply that on a greater scale yeah. for me that's what technology enables okay. one of the absolute key foundations of strategy though is context mm -hmm. you have to have a look where you're operating um and we we use a pesto analysis there which really looks um i'm probably gonna trip myself <laughs> up here but so it's political yeah, it's yeah. economic Social um, yeah, social technology, legal. It even includes demographics. If you want to sure. go into the pest elite side of things, sure, sure. looks at international markets, mm -hmm. looks at the environment. Mm -hmm. um, so it really is an all-encompassing model that you could use. Sure. But definitely, strategy, strategy is context dependent. Sure. Okay. 
One of the things that a lot of organizations do is when it's time for strategy, the CEO or the managing director and the different partners sit in and take a day and a half to strategize for the year ahead. And they know the strategy and it's just about going back to the team. I find that to be problematic. What is your view on sharing the strategy with the different people in an organization? So I think it goes even beyond sharing it. I think it talks to creating it. Sure. Because as the CEO of an organization, I may have a very pointed view about where the business needs to go. Sure. But another key point of strategy is matching your direction with your competence. Okay. So, I mean, if you if you look globally, um, so Southwestern Airlines, for example, mm-hmm. runs on a low price operator model. Okay. There are countless airlines in the world that have tried to replicate that and have failed. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Because it's in the DNA of how that business runs. Mm-hmm. It's how they think, it's how they do things. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not just a case of going, okay, we're going to be a low-cost operator, mm-hmm. because there's far more to it than that. Mm-hmm. And each organization has that magic, yeah. that something. That that, chemistry. Yeah, that they can do mm-hmm. that other people, other organizations can't do or sure. can't do as well. Sure. And if you find that your skill set becomes irrelevant to what you're doing, then obviously you need to be buying that in. Mm-hmm. But that means that at all levels of the organization, yeah. you need brains sitting in a room saying, I think we've got a skill there that we're not leveraging or that we could enhance. Mm-hmm. Um, and that only happens when you get people that are on the ground talking to your customers, dealing in the depths of the operation. That's true. I think as you become more senior, Mm -hmm. at times you can become removed from the real competence, the real magic of Mm -hmm. the business. Mm -hmm. And I think younger, um, sometimes more junior staff have a greater appreciation for that than than senior people do. So so it's an inclusive conversation. Must be. And then once you're out of the strategy, the actual, you know, two day or whatever, Mm -hmm. however long that workshop is, That conversation then needs to be held with the whole company sure because the strategy should be at an umbrella level mm-hmm. so then underneath that you need to say so how does our marketing now adapt to that strategy what's the marketing sure. strategy that backs that sure. what's the sales strategy what's the technology strategy sure. you know what's the business intelligence that kind of needs to sit underneath that and mm-hmm. yeah. um, okay. so everything and, and you can only do that by having conversations absolutely and sharing that yeah mm-hmm. Um, One of the things I was quite keen on is how important is benchmarking? I mean, one of my favorite books, and I'm surprised I actually got through it. (laughs) The Blue Ocean Strategy um, that says competitors are relevant if you are to disrupt your industry. Do you agree? So I'm going to say it depends. Um, And the the dependency is on how innovative is whatever it is that you're bringing to the market. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, there's a lovely model uh, which which really looks at is it is it valuable? So does it actually bring revenue to the business, mm-hmm. and how quickly can it be copied? Sure. You know, so I mean, you look for example at at all these things that aggregate. Um, so Airbnb, Uber, mm-hmm. they have competitors now. Sure. You know, and just because you're first in the market, if you're lucky enough to be, or sometimes unlucky enough to be. Um, it doesn't mean that you're going to be the most successful. Sometimes sure. first mover advantage is a disadvantage mm-hmm. because there's some key lessons there that need to be learned. Sure. So going back specifically to your question, you know, I think you've always got to look at what's happening in your market. You mm-hmm. cannot lose connection mm-hmm. with where you're playing yeah. because if you do that, you're going to be blindsided when disruption comes. Sure. And ideally what you want to be doing is, is constantly creating disruption within your own business so constantly innovating in a way though that's not incremental so sometimes you need a complete disruption sure. you know you need a complete product or mm-hmm. you know complete new thinking like in airbnb or mm-hmm. uber were mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. then but no longer are yeah um and and sometimes that even needs to be a spin-off sure. that you kind of take out of your business because sometimes we're too fixed mm-hmm. on what we know to be true. This is the strategy <laughs> and you have to implement. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my last questions would be: Can strategy be implemented mid-year, or is it? Oh, strategy can be implemented anytime. Um, I think I think the the cycle that um, businesses get into is that they generally do strategy at the time that the 
financial um, modeling, uh, kind of budgets yeah. um, are undertaken. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I think that's important because I really think you do want to make sure that whatever the strategy is that you have, mm-hmm. you have the resources necessary to deliver it. Yeah. But that does not mean that you need to make strategy at, you know, at the time of budget and you can do it any time of the year. Okay. And actually, I, th- I think you need to be reviewing strategy really often. Right. Not necessarily changing it, but certainly mm-hmm. reviewing it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, Janet, do you have any parting words for entrepreneurs out there who, like me, said, look, I'm frustrated with the fact that I'm doing the same thing. Um, I don't have the time. What parting words do you have for entrepreneurs? Well, you know, I, I would just say to entrepreneurs, firstly, it's a wonderful journey to be on. You know, I spent probably 20 years in corporate and I've now spent close to that as an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. Um, so I've really seen the best of both worlds and it gives you the most incredible freedom Mm -hmm. um, although sometimes we don't feel that way yeah and I would just say you know really just get clear on where you want to take your business and then make sure that every single day you're taking one step at least one step Mm -hmm. that's going to get you to that journey Mm -hmm. Um, and I think if you do that it's almost inevitable that you will get to the end goal that you seek. Um, I also want to say there's lots of resources on the Integrate Business website. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hook up with us, with us on LinkedIn and sure. Facebook and yeah, let's, let's have the conversation. Yes, and let's plan. In the words of Churchill is, if you fail to plan, you fail. You plan to fail. Janet, it was an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Um, how You said LinkedIn is one of the ways people can reach out to you. Do you have a Twitter account? Do uh, we have... do. We have Integrate Consult. Sure. Um, we have a website, which is Integrate Business. Mm-hmm. We also have Integrate Consulting. Okay. So we, we are definitely findable online. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. It was a great pleasure. I enjoyed it too. Bule Connect, connecting you to the world. For more information, log on to www.buleconnect.com.